just as the earth depends on the water cycle to sustain life, we as humans benefit from the proverbial storms of life to shape who we are as individuals. Yes, these storms can cause harm and even leave a lot of damage in its wake. But those of us who are fortunate to reflect back at what we were able to get through, we cannot help but to feel a certain level of awe and a lot of gratitude. What I've come to learn is that it's less about the storm, its size and potential impact, and more about how we view the storm or challenge. This potentially catastrophic event and what tools we decide to use to get through it. A powerful tool is our choice of words. I'm excited to share what the impact of words, for better or worse, has had along the journey of my life. Since a little girl growing up in Canada, I was always intrigued by the power of words, how they made a boring sentence better, in that mandatory book for that fourth grade book report more palatable. Often, I would dive into the dictionary. Remember those? <laughs> Actual books that had words in alphabetical order and pick three new random words that I would incorporate into my day. But it didn't stop there. I parenthetically forced my friends to use them in our childhood play. Imagine the pleasant surprise of a passerby hearing this little girl in Platts ask her friend why she was feeling verklempt <laughs> after losing to me at a game of handball. Admittedly, my original motivation for adding to my lexicon was mostly to sound smart and my writings to look fancy. But as I matured and lived a little bit more of life, I realized that words serve for more than sounding fancy when summarizing a book, conjugating verbs, or translating American Sign Language to English. Our use of words help us to communicate our perspectives and concepts as well as to inform the world of who we are and who we perceive to be. Yes, you're hearing a voice a few octaves lower than you'd expect, but they're still my words. Just through a highly skilled American Sign Language interpreter. Whether single or multisyllabic, the words we choose to use in our day-to-day -day lives, the descriptors we espouse or accept from others, are directly correlated to how we navigate the good and not so good times of our life. Let's face it, adversity is gonna come. We are gonna be challenged. Storms are gonna come. It's not a matter of if, it's when. I'm here to tell you that the power of words and what you decide to use can get you through. I want to get to allow you on my journey. It all started with George and Margaret, my mom and dad. They decided that they're going to leave Trinidad for a better life once they heard about some experiences and opportunities that were opening up in Canada, United States, and England. So leaving what they knew, their comfort zone, they cut the sails. My father left and called for his children and his wife six months later. We moved to Canada. And if you're wondering, I'm the adorable baby. <laughs> Growing up in Canada, it was incredible. I grew up in a, in a town just west of Toronto, Malton. It was a village. It was safe. People knew everybody, you know, everybody knew your name. These were the days in, 70, in the 70s and 80s when we didn't lock our houses, our cars. We saved our seats in fast food restaurants with our purses. We went to school, all of our friends and their friends and their family, all the siblings, we went to school together. There was no time for bullying. There was a sense of belonging. At that age, not only with my parents, but I chose some words for myself. Pulchritudinous, mesmeric, Autodidactic. Chatty Cathy, maybe. That's what some would say. Audacious. 
Those are the words that I chose and that were bestowed lovingly by my parents. I would always go into the books and I would choose those, those uh, words. Well, one day, when we would visit our grandmother in Boston, I learned about schools. I didn't have to go to grade 13 in Toronto. We went to grade 13. Didn't have to go to grade 13. And I cut the sail from my loving, very comfortable and safe haven for a better life and more opportunity at Northeastern University. Not only for my degree in entrepreneurship, but I also learned American Sign Language. My friend Cecilia, as we grew up, she laughed because she said, Arlene, you managed to outspeed the hearing and now you want to bother the deaf people. <laughs> I said, okay, <laughs> kind of. I can't pass a deaf person and you know, I just can't help it. So anybody who knows me, again, I love words. So I have to say when I was at Northeastern, words were also still reinforced. Positive, affirmative words. A lot of people, including Dr. J. Keith Motley. I still call him Dean Motley. I can call him Keith now that I'm in my 50s, but you know, it's kind of, you know. So he, among other people, really invested in me. Upon graduation, I just was sure I was gonna be a mover and shaker. I was gonna be traveling the world, just starting businesses, because my degree was in entrepreneurship after all. But my husband and I decided that I would serve best the family as a stay-at-home full-time mom. Now don't get me wrong, I had all intention of being a mother, but that was just one of the things on the list, short list of priorities. I was gonna have kids, I was gonna at least do a, two of my five very viable business plans, the white picket fence and a dog named Fido, all before 30. Because really, who does any, oh, get my JD MBA. Because who does anything after 30, because that's old. At least so I thought. So once I had my kids, I knew it was very important to instill in them that the importance of words and let them know that they're important. So I'd take those cheeks and I would say to them, look at them in their eyes and say, you smart, you kind, and you important. Well, maybe not quite like that. I let them know that they were smart and this is what they, they deserve the best education and opportunities in life. I parented on purpose. I was mom. Michael, Miles, and Maddie, they were born seven years right after, within a seven year window right after I graduated from university. My heart's right there. Life was good. We had dance night with the family. We played outside in the snow. They lived with other kids that were about the same ages. It was good. Until it wasn't. Just as the economy fell out in 2008, Shortly thereafter, so did my marriage. I was in double digits. Who gets divorced after just over 20 years of marriage? I was one and done. We were married. We shared one purse. Everything was great, again, until it wasn't. The words that were so lovingly bestowed upon me by my parents and that I chose for myself now have become indigent, destitute, Pro se, unworthy victim. Wow. Wow. So, this young lady who was full of promise, stay at home mom at 27, now is barely keeping her, her nose over the above water. I have three kids at three different parts in their lives, looking at me and saying, okay, mommy, what's the plan? Because that's another middle name I have, Arlene, what's the plan? <laughs> so I literally had to stop and really think of what I had to do just to survive. I was left adrift, effectively feeling abandoned. abandoned. 
I was flailing on the bottom rung of Maslow's hierarchy, barely making my physiological needs, found ourselves home insecure, car repoed twice, the same car. I had seven cars in the space of seven years. A gentleman chivalrously wanted to give me a walk me to my car after a cup of coffee. I said, no, I'll just ride over there, I'll, I'm fine. Because I didn't want him to see my car. Some didn't have heat, but that's okay. I had to do what I had to do. I worked three jobs, and a family member that lived outside of Boston, about an hour, allowed us to stay at his place. He's like a father figure to us. But I didn't give up. My kids and I knew that we were going to get through this. We we're very close, and we we're even closer. We had each other's backs. I said to them, until you can pick your own words, and if nothing else, you guys know that you have each other and you have me. Now, I'm the custodial parent. I'm not just mom. That's not true. I'll always be mom. I went down to Florida. I was beckoned, if you will, by someone who played a really crucial, very critical role in my life. When you decide, when one decides that they have to keep it moving, or they lose, not on their own volition, but sometimes they experience loss. We need people to pour in words of affirmation. I would be remiss, because there were a lot of people. While I did lose a lot of people, I've gained a lot of people. People that I expected to be there for me were not. And the people that I least expected or I had yet to meet were there. So, I'd have to say, Dr. Lawrence M. Drake. I'd be remiss if I didn't say his name out loud. Not only did he give me words of affirmation, but he put action behind it. He called me down to work alongside him at a university where he was the interim president. And with that, I said, I can do, I can do this. I was in the boardroom alongside him. I was work, I was learning vicariously. My brain that seemed to have atrophied was actually starting to work again. I realized that I'm actually smart. I knew it, but you kind of forget. I'm redoubtable. I'm metal. So once I decided that I could do this, and once Larry looked at me and said, because I said to him, I did not want to be in a place where I was pigeonholed. I'm a seasoned woman here. See, I didn't say old, I'm seasoned. I'm a seasoned student now. But then, a year ago this time, I didn't know where I was gonna be. I was still housing, I was still insecure. I didn't know what my job was gonna be because this was a finite role. He looked at me and he said, Arlene, you are smart and you're going to be fine. When I'm finished with you, you're going to be a strategist and a consultant so you don't have to worry about retirement. I didn't have, at that point, a pension from which to pull that I earned. 401k, cash poor. But because he looked at me and he believed that I could, I said I can. The irony of this sunset here, sunrise, is because I went down to Florida, a place that I didn't expect that I'd ever go to live, at least on purpose. No offense to anybody that's from Florida. <laughs> but I'm, you know, I'm a Northeast and I'm from the great white North. I'm good. Especially I don't like snakes or alligators. But I will tell you, this is a picture after Hurricane Ian and Nicole. The irony of it all. I went down there to two 100-year historic storms. This is the calm. But interestingly, there was still damage. If you were to see behind me was the damage that was left in the wake. 
All this to say is that there will be storms, there will be adversity, there will be trials, there will be people that will be naysayers and tell you you can't do it. But it's important that you see your value. You need to pick your word. If someone or people are not giving you the word, find people that will. My question to you is, if you don't feel like you're in a place, whether it's a relationship, whether it's at work, that you're not valued, keep it moving. I had the pleasure of my two youngest going here at Babson. Thank you. Miles, second time co-founder of a startup, CMO. So that's twice. Madison will be graduating social entrepreneurship. And she has a plethora of things I can't even keep up with. She's an accelerator here. Social entrepreneurship. Michael, who was a little shaky for just a minute, not because of the rigors, because my kids are smart, because he just wanted to be a social butterfly, but I don't know where that comes from. <laughs> Fulbright at 19. Fluent in Chinese, one of the global and uh, the national uh, stages, USC School of Marshall Accounting Finance and is an investment analyst. Thank you. And there's me, a seasoned 55, okay, I just heard 56 a few, last week, woman in front of you who's gone through storm. And the storm is not even done, but I can tell you I'm going to get through. I'm getting through. So where I tell you I'm redoubtable, I'm MBA, I'm a strategist, I'm a consultant, I'm a friend, I'm a mother. My question is, what's your word? Thank you.